Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about my top favourite 25 movies from 1995. These are all in accordance with the release dates from IMDb. And again, there's no real right or wrong to this. These are just my personal favourite movies from this year um, that I enjoyed the most. Uh, so that being said, I'm going to get into some honourable mentions from this year. Um, kicking it off with my first honourable mention is Waterworld uh, with Kevin Costner. Great sort of um, dystopian future movie, this, about how the polar ice caps have melted and it's pretty much land is really, really hard to come by. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it was a big budget movie that bombed at the box office, didn't make anywhere near the money it was uh, thought that it was going to make or supposed to make. Um, but it's still entertaining. Um, next honorable mention for me is To Die For with Nicole Kidman. Um, just a great little suspenseful thriller. Uh, really, really underrated. Um, next honorable mention for me is Clueless. Uh, this movie just drips uh, 90s all over it, really. Um, great sort of high school comedy set in the time period. Um, next honorable mention for me is Sudden Death with Van Damme. Um, yeah, just a great, awesome little action movie. Um, I massively enjoyed Powers Booth as the villain in this as well. It's just absolutely great. Um, next honorable mention for me is Sense and Sensibility. Just this great period drama with an absolutely fabulous cast. Um, next honorable mention for me is Woody Allen's Mighty Aphrodite. Um... Yeah, I really enjoyed this film. It sort of follows this couple who've adopted this kid, but he's really, really talented. So they try and find out a bit more about his backstory and who his real parents are. And it turns out his mother was actually a prostitute. Um, but yeah, it was just a great little comedy that I, I really, really enjoyed. Um, next honorable mention for me is Terry Gilliam's 12 Monkeys. Just this great, another great sort of sci-fi movie set in the future uh, with Bruce Willis and Brad Pitt. Um, next honourable mention for me is Michael Bay's uh, Bad Boys, the first movie. Uh, I absolutely love the soundtrack in that film. The opening music score uh, is absolutely phenomenal. Um, not a great movie, but a very, very entertaining one as well. Um, the sequel is very entertaining as well. I've not seen the third film yet, uh, but I do uh, enjoy the first two. Um, next honourable mention for me is the comedy Tommy Boy uh, with Chris Farley and, and David Spade. Uh, yeah, just a really, really good, competent um, comedy movie that I really, really enjoyed and really, really sort of underrated for the uh, time that it came out. Um, next honourable mention for me is Strange Days. Uh, yeah, just another really good uh, sort of dystopian sci-fi movie set in the future with uh, Ralph Fiennes um, yeah I really really enjoyed this one um, next honourable mention for me is uh, Babe um, sort of follows this uh, the, this pig that sort of acts as like a, a working dog and herd and sheep uh, it's a it's a fine movie. It's not one of my favorites. It's it. Uh, when I watch this film, I, I I sort of think, what the fuck is George Miller doing? This is the guy who did Mad Max. Um. Yeah, it, it was just it just feels like a, a weird weird sort of turn. Um, but it's still enjoyable. There's still some entertaining moments there. Um, next honourable mention for me is an absolute anime classic, uh, and that is Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, uh, really, really enjoyed this one, sort of up there with Ninja Scroll and Akira for me in terms of animation. The film just looks absolutely stunning. Um, but yeah, there's just more movies from this year that I, I enjoyed more. I don't really have much of an emotional connection with this um, story in particular. Um, next honourable mention for me is pretty much a childhood staple of mine, and that is Casper. Um, yeah, great cast in this one. Uh, lots of really weird, pointless cameos in it, uh, but the CG in this, the CGI in this film, just still holds up. It looks phenomenal, uh, even to this day. Um, I still just wonder like how they did it for for the time it came out. I mean, it's ninety five. I mean, CG CGI wasn't really 
that great back then. It was it was still sort of in the experimental phase, but this film just still holds up in terms of effects. Uh, not a perfect movie by any means, but it's still enjoyable. Um, next honorable mention for me is a film based on a video game, and that is uh, Mortal Kombat. Um, probably, in my opinion, the best movie to be based on a video game. Um, nowhere near perfect. It sort of just follows this martial arts tournament, and we get to sort of see like different combinations of different people fighting. It's still really enjoyable. I grew up watching this. It's it's a ton of fun. Kick ass theme to this movie as well. It's absolutely great. As soon as as soon as you press play, the film just has this amazing, amazing song. Um, but yeah, it's not perfect. No, it really, really isn't. But it's it's just a silly, goofy movie. Um, next up for me is a movie called Smoke. Uh, just this really, really good little interesting indie movie about these characters um, that come and go from this um, cigarette shop. Uh, I just really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was really, really fun. Got a great, great cast to it as well. Um, next honorable mention for me is Adam Sandler and Billy Madison. Uh, I absolutely love this film. It's just, it's just so funny. Um, it sort of follows, follows Billy Madison, who who is a bit incompetent and not very, very grown up. He's really, really immature and how he his his father sort of wants to retire, but he um he has to sort of compete for the for the business by going back to school uh, and repeating each grade over a period of two weeks to try and graduate. Um but yeah, I, I, I still really, really enjoyed it. It's up there with the Happy Gilmore for me, uh, um just two of his best from the nineties in my my opinion. Um, my next honorable mention is Friday uh, with Ice Cube and Chris Tucker. This film was just absolutely hilarious. Um, yeah, it just, it made me laugh from start to finish. Just abso- absolutely thought it was hysterical. Um, definitely check this one out if you've not seen it. Um, next honorable mention for me is uh, Disney's Pocahontas. Uh, this movie looks looks really, really good on Blu-ray. Um, it's really, really phenomenal. Some great, great songs in there as well. Same sort of story as Avatar and Dances with Wolves. It's that sort of... Um, and Fangully as well. That's that's that story of... Um, Oh, we, oh, we, oh, um, mankind's interfering and it shouldn't do it uh, with nature... Um, but yeah, I, I I still still enjoy this film. The music and it's absolutely great. Um, a lot of people thought this was a sort of step back from The Lion King and how good that was. Uh, I can see that. I can see why. But it's still a film I I absolutely enjoy. And uh, I remember going to see this at the cinema when it came out at Edge Lane. Um, but yeah, check this check this one out. I I still enjoyed it. Um, next honourable mention for me is uh, Balto, just another great animated movie about um, a husky sled team who was sort of led by this half dog, half wolf um, that everyone just sort of like looks down on. Um, they were they were used to sort of uh, bring medicine uh, into this town. Um, the villain in this movie, voiced by the amazing Jim Cummings, whose um, voice talents are just absolutely second to none he's, he's just really really up there uh the villain in this film does not get enough credit for being a villain i mean what he does is just absolutely despicable uh when you really really break it down and think about it um but yeah it's another just sort of great great animated film uh with some great cameos in it as well uh, my last honourable mention from 95 is uh, Get Shorty. Uh, pretty much got an all-star cast of this one uh, about a loan shark who sort of comes to Hollywood. Uh, I really, really dig movies set in LA and, and Hollywood. I, I just absolutely love them. I just think the scenery looks absolutely gorgeous. And um, this was no exception. Really, really dug this movie. So yeah, they're all my honourable mentions. Uh, I'm going to kick it straight off now and get in to number 25. Uh, for me, uh, and that is Species. Um, not a great movie, this by any street uh, stretch of the imagination, but it's absolutely entertaining as hell. 
Uh, I remember seeing the cover to this when I was about eight years old at Blockbusters and I was like, I need to see this film. It just looks absolutely uh, insane and incredible. Um, Natasha Henstridge in this movie as well, who's absolutely hot as fuck, um, plays this sort of horny alien um, that has to sort of mate and breed uh, as soon as possible. Um, But it's got a great, great cast. You've got... Ben Kingsley, Alfred Molina, Forrest Whitaker in there as well. Um, the movie's got a cast that's that's too good for its own good, if that makes sense. But I still absolutely dug it. I just thought it was entertaining as hell. Uh, by no stretch is this a, a great movie or a perfect movie. Uh, it's just a silly, silly movie um, that I absolutely loved and enjoyed. Um. If you're into something that's very sort of tongue in cheek and not not serious and not not great, just an easy watch, this is one to um, check out. Um, so yeah, I'll leave that there. Uh, my next pick coming in at number twenty four uh, is an absolute childhood staple of mine that I grew up on, and again, this is not a perfect movie. Uh, Batman Forever. Um, the first of the two Joel Schumacher movies. Um, yeah, I enjoy the hell out of this film. Um, I've probably rewatched this film a couple of hundred times. <laughs> um, it's 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 just ap- absolutely spoke to me as a, as a kid because this was my this was my Batman growing up. Uh, I love the Tim Burton ones, but this was the first one that I actually saw at the cinema. Um, it's got a great cast to it as well. Tommy Lee Jones and Jim Carrey as the villains are just absolutely insane. Um, Jim Carrey in particular, but it's got Tommy Lee Jones trying to out Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey in this movie. Um, if you get what I mean, he just the the pair of them just don't really s- sort of know what to do with the roles they've been given, particularly Tommy Lee Jones. So he's just sort of going with it. Um, you've got Val Kilmer in there as Batman as well. Um, Nicole Kidman as this this absolutely horny doctor. She's uh, I've heard someone say she's like a, a teenager with a boner. Yeah, she just all she wants to do is is get under Batman's cape. Um, yeah, it's just absolutely absolutely uh, crazy when you think about it. And you've got Chris O'Donnell as well, who's introduced as Robin. Um, but by by no means, this is a very style over substance movie. Um, it looks great. Uh, it's probably the Batman movie with the best ever soundtrack um, Kiss My Rose by Seal and Hold Me Kill Me Kiss Me Thrill Me by U2 just some of the best music in a film ever uh, I absolutely love and adore those songs particularly the Seal one um, but yeah it's again not a great movie but a childhood staple of mine so coming up next to me at the number 23 spot is Living in Oblivion. Um, great movie. This about a sort of indie filmmaker who's who's trying to make this movie, but everything is going fucking tits up. Um, actors sort of become really, really big-headed and, and lose their way. Um, sort of become too big for their own boots in a sort of way. Production goes wrong. Um, there's a scene uh, with the catering that is just absolutely hilarious. Uh, Peter Dinklage is in this film as well. Um, he's sort of involved in filming this dream sequence in a movie. And he's like, well, why would you need a, a dwarf for this dream sequence? And he's like, well, it's a dream. And he's like, why the fuck does everyone think in movies that a dwarf fits in a dream? Have you ever dreamed about a, <laughs> and there's always a dwarf in it but before is that always the case it just leads to just some hilarious stuff um that i absolutely really really enjoyed in this one it's coming up next for me at number 22 is another sort of childhood staple of mine with jim carrey and that is uh, ace ventura when nature calls sees ace ventura go to africa to try and retrieve this great great white bat before this war kicks off between these two african tribes uh, simon callow is the villain in this as well it's just absolutely on point um just one of those great british actors who just brings so much entertainment as well um, Jim Carrey as well as Ace Ventura to see him come back because I know Jim Carrey isn't a big fan of doing sequels um, 
yeah, I, I just massively, massively uh, enjoyed this one. Uh, it's on par for me with the first one. Um, yeah, just, just again, hugely, hugely entertaining. And, and, and it just made me laugh so hard as well in certain scenes. Uh, it's coming up next for me at number 21 is Kevin Smith's Mallrats. Um, just a, a great comedy about these two guys who sort of break up with their girlfriends and they find out they're going on this dating show in the mall. Uh, and they just they just basically try try and wreck it. It's a sort of great comedy. You've got Jay and Silent Bob in there again as well. Um, probably one of the, the greatest cameos from Stan, Stan Lee in this film as well. Uh, you've just got some really, really good quirky scenes in it as well. You've got the... The sort of the woman as well who's got like the three nipples. Um, it's just really weird and memorable for some reason. But yeah, it's um, it's a great sort of little underrated comedy as well. You've got the guy as well who who's looking at the optical illusion, but he can't pick out what it is. But everyone else seems to, and it just really, really winds him up. Um, but yeah, it's a fun movie and it's worth checking out. Um, it's coming up next for me. Uh, the number 20 spot is a foreign film, uh, and that's called uh, La Um Yeah, I really, really dug and enjoyed this movie. Uh, it sort of follows a group of friends who one of them sort of um, is tortured by a, by a police officer, and it causes these riots to kick off, um, and his friends sort of end up getting a, a policeman's gun and holding this... Uh, uh, this policeman to not sort of ransom, but just just holding them and threatening them to say, you know, if our friend actually dies, we're gonna kill you. Um, it just leads us lead, lead to just some absolutely fantastic, fantastic drama. The film shot in black and white, and it actually looks stunning. Um, in that format, I just massively, massively enjoyed it, and and just some absolutely fantastic, fantastic performances in it as well. So yeah, coming up next for me at the number 19 spot is uh, Dead Man Walking, directed by Tim Robbins. Uh, just a great, great, powerful drama, this film, about about a nun who spends time with this guy who's um, he's on death row for rape and murder, um, played by Sean Penn. Um, yeah, uh, powerful is the... The perfect way to describe this movie. Um, the acting in it is on point. I believe Susan Sarandon won Best Actress for this at the Academy Awards. Uh, fully, fully deserved. Um, it's just a, a, an absolutely uh, the, the the quote here on the front is, is, is it just sums it up. Courageous and passionate drama. Um, it's just an absolutely fantastic, fantastic film by Tim Robbins. Um, yeah, if you've got the time, check this one out. I'm fully recommending every film on this list as well, by the way, just the honourable mentions as well. Um, next on my list, at number 18, is one of Sam Raimi's most underrated films. I think this and A Simple Plan are two of his most underrated films, uh, and that is The Quick and the Dead. Wow, what a great Western this is, and it just absolutely ticked all the boxes for me. I absolutely fell in love with this movie when I saw it. The cast of this film, you've got Sharon Stone, Russell Crowe, Leonardo DiCaprio, Gene Hackman. The film is basically a Western battle royale. It's a tournament that takes place uh, with gunslingers and it's it's a tournament that is to the death. Um, it's all about the last one standing, the last survivor. It's basically like the World Cup knockout stages, but you die pretty much, uh, when you get knocked out. Um, Gene Hackman is the sort of villain. Absolutely great. Very sort of similar character that he played to in um, Unforgiven. Um, but I absolutely just love this movie. You've got Lance Hendrickson in there as well. It's the characters as well in this film that are so, so, so colourful. You've got Russell Crowe as the sort of um, criminal underdog. Um, DiCaprio is in this really um, early role from him as well, in this as a sort of young, confident sort of gunslinger. Um, not too cocky, but definitely, definitely confident. I just dug it so much and just thought it was absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, can't recommend that one enough. 
Uh, so coming up next for me at the uh, number 17 is probably a movie that's a lot of, on a lot of people's favourite childhood films, uh, and that is Robin Williams in Jumanji. Um, yeah, what can I say about this movie? Um, it's just a ton of fun. Um, it pretty much is a movie about a board game that when you play it, you get get um, you get more than what you bargained for with it. Uh, it sort of acts as a bridge between your reality and this jungle reality, um, which just just absolutely can ruin you. And the only way to actually get rid of, of all the horribleness that goes on is to actually finish the game itself. Um, just a wonderful, wonderful uh, concept and idea for a film. I don't think this film is perfect by any means, um, but the set pieces, um, the practical effects in the movie are absolutely great. Um, some of the CG doesn't hold up, particularly with the monkeys, in my opinion. Um, but the story is is absolutely uh, is absolutely great and fantastic, and the performances are wonderful. Um, I just massively, massively enjoyed it. One that was on TV all the time at Christmas growing up. It's just a great, great fun adventure movie um, that I, I massively, massively enjoyed. Uh, it's coming up next for me. Uh, the number 16 spot is Jim John Muse's Dead Man starring Johnny Depp. Um, this is another great western shot in black and white um, follows an accountant played by Johnny Depp who who um, murders a man and goes on the run but ends up taking this spiritual journey um, I just thought it looked absolutely fantastic as well you've got Alfred Molina and Michael Wincott in this as well um, two great actors alongside Depp who just give a, an absolutely fantastic performance Um Absolutely wonderful, wonderful film. Um, check this one out if you've not seen it. I know it's very underrated. Um, but yeah, I don't know how difficult or how hard this film is to come by. But it's totally worth the watch. Uh, so coming up next for me at the number 15 spot is Richard Dreyfus in Mr. Holland's Opus. Uh, I massively, massively enjoyed this film. It's a great little drama about um, a music teacher who it sort of follows his life over the decades that he's teaching at this school and the sort of turmoil he has to deal with. His, his, uh, his stu the students at this school aren't really taking music seriously and he sort of injects a new lease of life into it for his students. Um, he has to deal with the fact that... Um, the school can't really provide the funding for it anymore and that it might actually close and then pull in the plug on it as well. Um, he has to deal with the fact that he is a music teacher. He absolutely loves music and has just an eclectic taste in music as well. Um, but he has to deal with the fact that his recently um, born son who we find out um, when he sort of hits the toddler stage that he's, he's actually deaf and can't can't hear and the way we find out how how his son's death is just absolutely heartbreaking and we follow that sort of storyline as well it where it takes you to um his son sort of becoming a young adult at school um and at least it's just this great scene where um mr holland sort of sings sings to his son through sign language the the john lennon song beautiful boy it's just an absolutely fantastic fantastic scene um I really, really enjoyed this drama with some some great performances in it as well. Um, alongside Richard Dreyfuss, you've got um, William H. Macy in there as well. He was absolutely great. Uh, Terence Howard's in this movie as well. Massively, massively enjoyed it. So yeah, coming up next to me at number 14 is the film that actually won Best Actor this year for Nicolas Cage, and that is Leaving Las Vegas. Um, just what an all-round solid performance from Nicolas Cage. is the best he's ever been, in my opinion. Fully deserving of the Oscar. And you've got Elizabeth Shue in there as well, who just gives another outstanding performance in this film. Two massive, massive powerhouse actors doing what they do best. Uh, the film just sort of basically follows this premise about Nicolas Cage's character who's sort of embracing the fact that he's going to drink himself to death and he just sort of does it on his own terms. 
uh, and he ends up meeting this prostitute played by Elizabeth Shue and their conversations that they have with each other are absolutely great um, you've also got a cameo in this as well from um, Julian Lennon who works at this bar um, that I just thought was re- really really hard to see um, but yeah it, it's it's flawless this movie when it uh, in terms of acting it's just absolutely absolutely fantastic uh, and I absolutely really really enjoyed it so coming up next for me at the number 13 spot is Ron Howard's space epic uh, Apollo 13 uh, wonderful wonderful cast in this one you've got um Tom Hanks and Gary Sinise as well reunited from Forrest Gump. Kevin Bacon, Bill Paxton, Ed Harris. The film is basically uh, the retelling of the ill-fated Apollo 13 mission, which was supposed to land on the moon but got damaged on the way there. And they were just worried if if NASA were going to be able to bring the astronauts back safely to Earth. And it just leads to an absolutely fantastic, fantastic tense scene. Um, the movie looks phenomenal on Blu-ray as well. Just absolutely fantastic, fantastic movie. Um, so coming up next for me, at the number 12 spot, is probably a film, most people would probably have this appear in their top three easily. Um, uh, but for me, it's uh, David Finch's um Crime Masterpiece 7. Um, Yeah, I just don't have the emotional attachment to this film a lot of people have. This is a very, very good film and a very, very well-made film. It's it's absolutely uh, fantastic. That's not underselling it in any any sort of way. It is absolutely great. Um, The main villain in this film as well, who I, I won't spoil who it is, in case anyone's not seen it. Um, But the marketing from this film... Uh, did not disclose who it is uh, because at the time it was uh, sort of a very famous actor who was coming into their own. Um, so yeah, the name doesn't even appear on the cover. Um, it just the film is basically about these two detectives who are who are trying to solve the case of someone who is committing murders that are all themed and connected to the seven deadly sins, and it, it when you find out the last couple of murders, what they are and how they how they fit into the d- Deadly Sins is absolutely really, really, really clever and really masterfully done. Um, it's a very uncomfortable watch as well. Um, some scenes in it are just absolutely horrifying. Um, I don't use that word lightly. They, they really are terrifying and uncomfortable. Um but yeah, it's just it's it's a it's a great 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 movie, but it's it's not what. Well, it's, it's hard to say. It is a favorite of mine, um, but it is it is a great movie. There's just there were just more movies I personally enjoyed more than this one. Um, if I didn't, it would obviously have appeared higher on my list. Um, but yeah, it's just one that I, I, I really, really dug the more and more I watched it. So coming up next to me at the number 11 spot is Pierce Brosnan's first out and as James Bond. Uh, and that is Goldeneye. I've got it, of course, in the box set. Probably seen this a few times over my few uh, over my videos. But this was just a great, great, great um, refresh Um for James Bond, we got obviously the last, the last two prior to this were done by uh, Timothy Dalton, who sadly we didn't really get to see more of as Bond because he's my personal favorite Bond and License to Kill being my personal favorite James Bond film. Um, but the franchise was going through some legal issues at the time, and by the time all that was ironed out, Timothy Dalton had lost interest in the role. So in stepped in Pierce Brosnan, um, but he does an absolutely fantastic job in his in in his um, his first outing. Um, a great, great, great opening scene that I really, really dug. Um, great to see Bond come up against another double O agent as the villain. In my opinion, um, some great unintentionally funny moments in this film as well. Um, one that sort of takes place. Um, 
at a sort of uh, a steam room spa, which uh, leads to just some hilar- a hilarious sequence involving an ice bucket. Um, but yeah, it was it was just a great great spy thriller, absolutely fantastic climax in this as well when things come to a head with the villain. Uh, I just really, really in, in, enjoyed that scene. I won't spoil how it ends, uh, but it's absolutely great. Alan Cumming as Boris as well as one of the great sort of Bond side side character villains um, in this movie. Uh, yeah, just just absolutely, absolutely enjoyed it. Um, entertainment was through the roof for me on, on that one. So, coming up next for me, uh, the number 10 spot, is uh, Bruce Willis and Sam Jackson in Die Hard with a Vengeance. Uh, yeah, just a great, great sequel to Die Hard. Probably the best sequel to Die Hard. Uh, I enjoy two. Uh, four's okay. Uh, five is absolutely garbage. It makes four look like the first one. Um, but this one was just absolutely wonderful. Uh, basically, the premise to it is, is someone is setting off bombs in New York and... John McClane, played by Bruce Willis, becomes a target for this uh, this uh, bomber, pretty much. Uh, he makes him do all these crazy, crazy tasks. Um, particularly the first thing he does is pretty, pretty shocking um, stuff. But I absolutely enjoy this film. The entertainment factor is through the roof. I won't spoil what the vendetta is against John McClane that this this guy has called Simon played by uh, Jeremy Irons who's a great villain in this movie um, but yeah when that comes to a head it's absolutely satisfying and everything all sort of sort of makes sense uh, wonderful climax wonderful set pieces uh, wonderful little tasks that McLean and um, Zeus played by Sam Jackson have to complete uh, just all all these sort of puzzles that make you think Um but yeah, I absolutely really, really enjoyed this one. Um, entertainment factor was through the roof for me. So coming up next for me at number nine on my list, and you might think, really, you've ranked this higher than seven? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I really, really enjoyed this movie as a kid, uh, and that is Disney's a goofy movie. Uh, oh my God, this movie is the 90s in a time capsule. Um Absolutely wonderful animation to it. Great little story to it. I really, really like this movie. Uh, I can't really say anything bad about it, really. I just really, really enjoyed it. It's just an absolute ton of fun. The the music in this is absolutely great. The songs are wonderful. Um, Jim Cummings, again, is in this uh, as PJ's dad. Um, The premise is basically Max uh, played... Uh, who's Goofy's son, um, is uh, going to school and pretty much all the school kids are interested and they love this absolute sort of Michael Jackson Prince hybrid of a pop star called Powerline and how he's, he's sort of putting on a rock concert and Max sort of lies to this girl, he really likes uh, Roxanne, lies and says, oh, Powerline and my dad are friends, we're going to go and see him in concert and perform with them on stage. And obviously that's not true. Um, Max ends up getting into trouble at school with the principal and he rings his father and says, you know, you've got to keep your son in line otherwise he's going to end up in the electric chair. What the fuck that means, I don't really know. Um, And ends up taking him out on a fishing trip and it just leads to just some absolute chaos and wonderful animation and some absolutely hysterical, hysterical scenes. Yep, I'm sorry. It's not a masterpiece by any means. Um, but I'm sorry, I enjoy it a hell of a hell of a lot. So, coming up next for me, at the number eight spot, is a film based on a Stephen King book, and that is uh, Dolores Claiborne, uh, with Kathy Bates and Jennifer Jason Leigh. The look of this movie is just absolutely stunning. Um, I really, really dig it. The plot... Basically, is about a woman, uh, Dolores Claiborne, played by Kathy Bates, who used to sort of was a housekeeper for this woman who mysteriously died. But a lot of people blame her for her sort of for her murder, really, in the cause of her death. And Jennifer Jason Lee sort of comes back to this town where her mom lived and where this sort of so called murder happened, and she discovers a lot more about her past and her childhood. 
and the and the mystery of what really happened. But I just really, really uh, dug this movie. Thought it was really, really creepy. Great drama and suspenseful thriller. Um, just absolutely wonderful. A bit like Misery in this. It's a bit more grounded in reality as opposed to the supernatural, which is what Stephen King's more famous for. Um, but yeah, uh, as I said, it was just a uh, much, much more of an enjoyable film. So coming up next for me, at number seven, is Brian Singer's The Usual Suspects. Um, just a great, great movie, this one, um, with some absolutely fantastic performances and a fantastic story. The film basically follows uh, these five suspects that get arrested um, for this uh, crime that was going down on these docks. And, of course, we spend the majority of the film with Kevin Spacey, who's retelling the tale of what really, really happened um, about this this mob boss called Kaiser Sose, who everyone's sort of afraid of. Absolutely a ruthless gangster. Um, and how his involvement and how everyone uh, is sort of involved in this uh, this crime that went down. Uh, absolutely phenomenal cast. Uh, Stephen Baldwin, Benicio del Toro, Gabriel Byrne, Kevin Spacey, uh, Pete Postlethwaite's in this as well. Um, another one of those actors who's just sadly, sadly missed. Um, just wonderful. I won't dare spoil the ending to this because it is. If you spoil this movie, it will just ruin the film for you. It's best to go in blind, not knowing anything. Um, yeah, just absolutely wonderful. One of Brian Singer's best. So coming up next for me, uh, the number six spot is uh, the first of Richard Linklater's Before Trilogy, and that is uh, Before Sunrise. Uh, just an absolutely, absolutely great, fantastic romance film. Um, sort of follows these two strangers that meet on a train and they just decide... You know, well, they start talking and start to get interested in each other and they realise, fuck it, let's just get off at the next stop and see where where um, the rest of the day and the night take us. Um, just absolutely wonderful. Great to see Richard Linklater direct the movie he wanted to direct. This just feels like a movie that has no studio interference in it. It's just absolutely organic and flows wonderfully. Um this is a, tr uh, a trilogy as well that is sort of creeping up as one of my favourite trilogies. Uh, it's just absolutely wonderful about this relationship and how we follow it at three different stages uh, of its growth. Um, it's just absolutely great. The two leads in this as well are just uh, absolutely, absolutely wonderful and have such a such great chemistry. Um, these movies are very slow. They're very sort of dialogue-driven uh, don't expect like much action or or anything like that in these films, but they are absolutely wonderful, and the dialogue keeps you absolutely engaged um, completely into the story and into the characters, and I absolutely really, really enjoyed this. It was just such a breath of fresh air to watch these movies. Um, just absolutely wonderful. Uh, so coming up next for me, at uh, the number five spot, is um, A Little Princess. Uh, I absolutely love and adore this movie. Um, it's just absolutely great. I've got a bit of a history with this this movie. It's sort of... I grew up watching a lot of VHS tapes. Uh, I, as I said, I watched uh, Ace Ventura, When Age Calls, and Batman Forever. I had them on VHS tape growing up. And the trailer for this movie was always at the start of those two films. Um and I just thought, oh, that seems like a. As a kid, I was like, that's 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 a girl's film. That's 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 more geared. I'm not the target audience for that. That is a girl's film. And one day, the film actually came on TV, and I sat down and watched it, and I was like, right, okay, I'll I'll give it a chance, see what it's like. And I I, I just thought it was great. Um, as a kid watching it up, I watched it again as an adult. Didn't see it for many many years. It's just still so good and so so wonderful. Um, it's directed by Alfonso Cuaron, who was the director of Gravity, um, Prisoner of Azkaban, 
and Children of Men. Um, he also directed Roma as well, but I haven't seen Roma yet. The film uh, basically follows this this girl who was raised in India by her father, um, and she just has all these wonderful magical stories that she just loves to tell. Um, and she ends up going to this this uh, this boarding school for girls because her father's being sent off to war. Um, so obviously she fits in with the majority of girls and, and all the girls sort of love her and love her stories and love the magic of being whisked, whisked away with all, with all these tales. Um, the head mistress at this, this, this school is the nurse ratchet of this movie. She just doesn't like her at all and absolutely despises her. Um, she lives in, in as well, um, the best sort of room. At this at this school, uh, for the kids, uh, it's just an absolutely wonderful first class bedroom she stays in. Uh, but the father is is uh, declared dead in war. Um, we find out that he actually was killed in the war. So because he's he's passed away, the money for the school um, comes to a stop. So the headmistress says, "Right, you now going to be a, a servant girl." Um, you're very lucky that I'm not going to throw you out and cast you out on the streets. Um, your education stops. You know, to stay here, you, um, you're going to have to work for it and, and become a servant and only speak when spoken to and you not to interact with any of the other kids. Um, and it just sort of becomes like a, a Cinderella type story. Um, but as I said, the film's just so masterfully, masterfully done and directed and, and the story is told. I won't dare spoil the ending because I think this film is just so underrated and deserves to be seen and enjoyed. Um, the headmistress does something that is absolutely despicable towards the end, in my opinion, but she does get her comeuppance. Um, it just, yeah, it's so, so, so satisfying, the ending. And just an absolutely wonderful, wonderful film. Um, so underrated. Criminally underrated, this film. Um, just check it out if you've not seen it. So yeah, coming up at the number four spot for me is film pretty much seen as uh, Martin Scorsese's follow-up to Goodfellas, and that is Casino. Just a great, great, great um, gangster movie set in Las Vegas with an absolute fabulous cast Robert De Niro, Joe Pesci uh, the best Sharon Stone has ever ever been um, you've got James Woods in there as well absolutely fantastic fantastic movie I actually watched this movie um, coming back from uh, a trip to Vegas that I actually did um, and it just felt like I was back in there I was just taken aback Straight away, the film just captures Vegas uh, and the Strip absolutely, absolutely wonderfully. Um, it's got all the Scorsese-isms you would expect. It's funny. It's well-acted. It's a great story. It's violent. And it's just a joy to watch. Um, it's really, The standout scene to me is... Um, where a character dies in this sort of field and, and is buried out there. Uh, is beaten with baseball bats. I won't say who it is, but um, it just felt felt so violent and so grounded in reality. Um, but yeah, I can't say much much more about this film. Uh, it's got a lengthy runtime, but it absolutely flies by. It's so good and so great. Uh, performances in it are on point. De Niro's wonderful in this as well. Scorsese just knows how to get great performances out of his cast. Just absolutely wonderful. I'm not going to get too much into the plot in this one, but just check it out if you've not seen it. If you love Godfellas, you're going to love this one. So yeah, as we now crack in to the top three, I'm going to kick it off with the film that won Best Picture this year. So coming in at number three for me is Mel Gibson's Braveheart. The story of William Wallace and how he was leading Scotland to their, their own independence and break away from England. Um, England in this movie is just absolutely portrayed as evil, <laughs> to put it in a nutshell. But yeah, the battle sequences in this film are just absolutely on point. 
and just shows you what you can do with a ton of extras instead of CGI. Um, and it just looks absolutely wonderful. Um, so yeah, as I said, it's sort of about Scotland and how it wants to seek freedom from invasion from England. And the, the English in this film are just absolutely, absolutely despicable. Think they can do what they want and just rape all these women. Um, the king in this as well is just absolutely vile. Um, not in terms of, of of what he looks like or anything like that, but just what he does uh, is just absolutely horrific. Um, so you've got William Wallace played absolutely magnificently by Mel Gibson, who's sort of a a leader figure to the Scots. Um, yeah, and it's it's just absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Wonderful to look at movie. It's just absolutely, absolutely great. Um, as I said, those types of medieval, real gritty fights are just absolutely wonderfully captured in this movie. Um, it's stunning. It has an absolutely wonderful soundtrack as well. Directed by, by Mel Gibson. Um, really, really is underrated as a director. Uh, I mean, this and Hacksaw Ridge. Fabulous movies. Just wonderful, wonderful films that he knows how to make. Um, but yeah, I absolutely, absolutely dug this movie. It's very, very dark and very disturbing in places, um, particularly in some of the opening sequences. Um, but what keeps you invested as well is the characters as well. It's got a fantastic cast. Um, we lose characters along the way and it actually upset, upsets us and hurts us when we, when we have to say goodbye to them. But it is absolutely wonderful. The movies end as well, which I won't dare spoil, but it does end on such a better sweet note. I just think it needed to end on that note to do the film justice. It's just an absolutely great, great, great picture. And um, fully deserved of the Oscar, in my opinion. So coming in at number two for me is uh, another film that's sort of a, a childhood staple of mine. And that is the first Disney Pixar movie, um, Toy Story. This is a wonderful, wonderful tale of uh, jealousy, um, pretty much, and about fads and how they can come and go, um, and how your favourite thing can easily get replaced. Um, but it's told wonderfully, wonderfully through the magic of toys coming to life when the humans aren't around, and it just leads to just some absolutely fantastic fantastic visuals and a fantastic fantastic story um if you've not seen this film um i just implore you to to check it out it's not very long it's about 85 minutes but it's such a wonderful wonderful story um to get into my opinions of pixar and um the sort of the sort of other movies are just absolutely wonderful. They can come up with some some great, great, great stories that you wouldn't be able to tell uh, using live action, and they just use the animation to full full effect. Um, my favorite Pixar movie of, of all time is actually Toy Story Two. Uh, I absolutely adore that film. It advances from this one in every perfect way. It's a it's another great sequel to a great film that doesn't really get talked about as much. Um, but yeah, getting back to this first film, absolutely wonderful. Tom Hanks as Woody, um, Tim Allen as Buzz Lightyear, uh, just go hand in hand. It's a great, great, great movie. It sort of follows, to get into the premise of the film, to talk about it in a little bit more detail, is um, there's this kid, Andy, and um, the characters of the movie are basically his toys and his favourite toy is Woody who's a cowboy doll voiced by um, Tom Hanks and everyone sort of is fine with that hierarchy of of who's the favourite and who gets played with the most and that's just the way it is so it's coming coming up is Andy's birthday and he gets a new toy Buzz Lightyear played by Tim Allen who then becomes Andy's new favourite toy and it's just Woody's jealousy and how he can and can't really cope with with um, the fact that he's been exchanged. 
Um, and it just leads to an absolutely fantastic, fabulous story. Um, yeah, it's absolutely, absolutely wonderful. A childhood staple of mine and such a joy to watch. I remember seeing this at the cinema as well when I was when I was about four, four or five years old. It, it just blew my mind. Um, great, great, great movie. So that leads me to my number one pick from 95. And this is a movie I did not enjoy the first time I saw it. Uh, I thought the runtime sort of killed it off of me and I, I lost interest in it. But watching it again, I really, really see this for the masterpiece that it is. And it is absolutely fantastic. Uh, and that is Michael Mann's Heat. Yeah, this is my number one pick. It's absolutely a wonderful, wonderful action movie, this fantastic well acted to see Al Pacino and Robert De Niro on screen together acting off each other in this movie uh, they they have a scene together that isn't very long but my god does it leave such an impact it's such a joy and a rarity to see two actors of each of their calibers interact with one another it's just absolutely fantastic they're the yin and yang of this movie Al Pacino is the good guy. Robert De Niro is the villain. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful movie. Um, stellar cast of this film as well. Val Kilmer, Natalie Portman, even Bug Court in this from um, Harold and Maud. Uh, John Voight with the most badass mullet you've ever seen in your life. Um, yeah, Jeremy Piven, Hank Azaria. Wonderful wonderful cast um it pretty much follows it's cops and robbers basically um got al pacino as this officer who's on the hunt for de niro's character who's the leader of this sort of uh robbery gang we've got val kilmer in there as well um the standout scene to me in this is the bank robbery that takes place roughly about halfway through the movie the shootout sequence that takes place in the streets absolutely phenomenal the sound design and tech technology used in that scene is fan fucking tastic the sound of the gunshots in that movie echo through the street and it just feels so organic and so realistic you actually feel as if you're there and you need to duck and hide because the gunshots sound so realistic it's just absolutely absolutely wonderful i cannot recommend and praise this film enough um the runtime can put some people off it did for me at first but watching this film more and more making myself watch it more and more it just really really sunk in with me how good this this film is and the runtime is earned and it's deserved it's just absolutely fan freaking tastic um I can't say much more about it to praise that film, to praise this as much as it deserves. It's absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Um, for me, 1995 was just as good as 94. It just gave us some absolute masterpieces. Um, and this being the, cre the, the, uh, the cherry on top of a very, very delicious cake of a year for me. I absolutely dig this movie so, so, so much. Um, I can't say much more than that about it. It's just absolutely wonderful. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, so those are my top 25 from 95. Um, yeah, just another, another great, great, wonderful year. Uh, so I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to be back soon, hopefully, with my uh, top films. Yeah, top 20 films. From 1996, um, not as good of a year as 94 or 95. Those two just sort of really go hand in hand for me. Some real, real stellar standouts from those two years. Um, if you've liked what you've seen here, uh, please consider subscribing uh, to the channel and uh, give us a thumbs up and a comment. Maybe um, give us a mention of some films that I might have missed and what your personal top favourite films from um, this year where down below in the comments and of course check out my other videos as well i've got um my top favorite films dating back to 1971 um so yeah i'm gonna leave it there and say thanks very much for watching and take care